12 o'clock, Chief Tom Hackney with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Now. Good afternoon. Thank you for, uh, for your continued interest and support in our efforts that we're making now to, uh, to locate Lonzi Barton, 21 month old. Um, you know, this has been JSO's top priority since about 221 in the morning on Friday morning. And uh, that morning I was in contact with Sheriff Williams repeatedly. And since then I've been kind of contact and, and working directly with under Sheriff Pat Ivey, reviewing uh, information with him as it, as it comes in, uh, planning what we're doing next and kind of keeping him plugged in, taking direction. Uh, Trust me when I tell you, this is the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, job number one, and we have hundreds of people out there working with it right now. Uh, before I get into the details, though, we're, as, as we've searched this location out there, one of our searches have found the bones of a adult male or what it looks like an adult male. We're working through that information now, but I wanted to be sure that we got out there early to say that this is in no way related to our search efforts for Lonzi. But when you search, you find, and this is particularly uh, what we found here, <clears throat> we have received help. And this is, this is an impressive list, and I need to tell you because uh, this shows the law enforcement support and the community support here. Our partners in the search efforts today so far, Jacksonville, their Emergency Operations Center, the Jacksonville Fire Rescue Urban Search and Rescue. We've worked directly with the State Attorney's Office, Angela Corey in particular, and her, her team. The Clay County Sheriff's Office, Nassau County Sheriff's Office, St. John's, Baker County, Jacks Beach Police Department, Orange Park Police Department, Neptune Beach Police Department, Miami Police Department, uh, Miramar Police Department, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Department, FDLE, FBI, this is alphabet soup here, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, FEC Railroad Commission, Duval County School Board, and EquiSearch out of Texas has sent us 11 people in their search efforts here. Our efforts so far are the continuation of our search efforts that we began Friday. We've continued. I said it before, I'll say it again. This is not a willy-nilly search. The efforts and locations that we're using are based on information. Uh, yesterday we had some information come back that has led us to these particular locations. Uh, that continues to lead our search efforts and direct our efforts and attentions into these wooded areas and waterways at the south uh, end of Jacksonville near Phillips and 295. Uh, our efforts will continue in those areas. I said yesterday, if there's a puddle, we're in it. And if you uh, see what our efforts are, we're in those puddles, we're underneath those trees, we're searching. Uh, like I mentioned before, that led us to the discovery of, of another uh, human remains that are out there. So far, we've had at least 125 tips. These tips come in nationwide. The tips range from uh, different sightings of what they see to be Lonzi uh, to suggestions for investigators those tips are appreciated. It's through those tips and community efforts that come in that keep uh, detectives and officers focused on what they're doing. Last night I was able to, uh, to watch Ruben Evron's father talk to the media. You know, he seems like a really good and decent man with a conscience. He wants to know answers and he wants to believe his son when his son tells him that he had nothing to do with Lonzi's disappearance and what we feel to be Lonzi's death. You know, I really wish I could believe him when he tells me that, when he tells his father that, but I can't. I know the evidence. I know the facts. The facts that we're putting together now, there are pieces that are missing. And what is frustrating to myself, to the detectives and those who are searching, is that Ruben Ebron has the answers that we need. There are gaps in a timeline that only he can fill in. We know that the last person in care and custody of a 21 month old was Reuben Ebron. That 21 month old is not in his care and custody now. He's not in the care and loving arms of his mother. Reuben has the answers for those. If he would step forward, do the right thing, use the consciousness that his father has to step forward and give us that information, that will provide the answers that we need that will stop our search efforts and that will begin justice for a 21 month old who we don't know the location of now. You know, I, I, I understand the need to protect and our officers will protect uh, Ruben Ebron's constitutional rights. It's part of what we do. You may not like what, we, what he did or what we feel like he did, but we'll work to protect them. Um, but honestly, I'm worried more about Lonzi's rights now and where he is 
He has the right to not be left and thrown out as garbage. We want that right preserved. Um, I sound like a broken record, and I'm sorry. Um, it truly, it does break my heart and touch my heart that I have to keep coming out here without answers, but I will keep doing it. And our officers and detectives and these list of alphabet soup people that have come out here, close to 200 people are out there in the heat searching, and we will continue to do that until we have nowhere else to search, until I have no more questions without answers. I can take some of your questions now. Chief Hackney, you mentioned you can appreciate the father wanting to believe his son, but what you're saying that the son is the real key here and that basically he needs to come forward and yeah. say something. I'm working with the detectives and we're building a case as this progresses, but the keystone of this case is the recovery of his body. Again, I, I certainly want to protect the rights there of, uh, of Mr. Ebron. And, you know, there are certain constitutional things that, that we'll have to do to protect his rights, that he's had a first appearance and he's, he's been arrested on these two charges. Um, but he has contact with people. He has contact with his family members. Um, the potential for the media to have contact with him is, is out there. And my fear is that he would continue to, uh, to, to stretch the truth as he's done with us or, or manipulate the truth as he's done with us. With, with his family, with the media, the answers are in his heart. He needs to come up with that. You right? reached out to the family as well. Yes, we have. We've been in contact. And, and again, th these are good, decent people. And um, they know what the right thing to do is. Chief, the five-year-old girl, um, where is she? How's she doing? Uh, has she helped with when the child protection team spoke mm -hmm. to her? Has she helped with leads in this case? She is. She is. Well, first of all, she's a five-year-old. Um, she's as helpful as a five-year-old can be. Um, she has provided details, and, and I mentioned this yesterday. There's, a, there's things that I know that, that I think I can share that, that will help this case, but there's also a lot of things that I know and, and, and things that, that detectives are doing and then we share together that, that I can't. I can't and won't and really shouldn't. Um, just know this, that she's helping as much as she possibly can. She's with her mom. She's, she's being cared for. She's being loved. She is where Lonzi should be. Is she okay? Emotionally? Uh, it's hard to say. You know, she's five. Whatever happened that night, uh, we know probably not to be a good thing. She probably was around when that happened. So um, if my heart's breaking, it's breaking for her, too. What's her physical presence out at Kingsdale Elementary? You were getting closer toward getting somewhere, evidence coming back, another 24 hours in the books. Do you still feel that way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's coming together. Again, it's coming together right now without the body. I'd love to be able to say that we have recovered Lonzi. I would have loved to say a couple days ago that we recovered Lonzi alive. Again, that time is slipping away, and I think that, that hope slips away too. But that doesn't mean we're going to stop efforts to do it. This case is being worked actively with leads to build a case, and it will continue to do that. And as time passes, those pieces of evidence, which I spoke about before, continue to come in, and that case continues to be built. So you're we saw heavy police presence at the Kings Trail Elementary area and over at Deer Creek as well. Is that in connection with the search for Lonzo? Yes, the, the, what you see at the Kings Trail Elementary is, is part of our incident command system through the Emergency Operations Center in the city. Uh, that is just the command post. That's where we work out of. Logistically, you know, you've got a couple hundred officers. You've got grids that you have to do, um, searches that you have to keep track of. That's, this is a lot of data, a lot of information that, that you're trying to do. Keeping track of it and building that case, part of that is doing that. Working out of Kings Trail is just where we're doing for the command center. And again, searches are information driven, tip driven, and uh, some of that evidence driven that we have. We know you've searched a lot of retention ponds. Has it expanded beyond that as well? Are you getting tips elsewhere in the area? We are working with a primary focus of that South Phillips Highway 95 area. Until information leads us somewhere different, we're down there. And again, like I said, we're down there for a reason. Um, we're down there with a purpose, and as we search these retention ponds and can check them off a list, it, it's good in the fact that I know where he's not, and we're working through, working through a list of where he's not. That's going to put us to where he could be and where he is. How important are surveillance cameras? Are they helping you, or have you seen any cameras at all? Some we are, um, and, and again, that's, that's part of the information that we talk about. It is, it is refreshing to see how many surveillance cameras are out there. Uh, it luckily is in an area where there are a lot of surveillance cameras. We are getting tips 
hey, come take a look at ours. It might have something on it. So we'll go out there. We'll send investigators and go out there and do that. And we will continue to do that. Part of a canvas or, or an area search that we do is just doing that. It's looking for cameras and, and gives, us, gives us somewhere to go. If I can get a lead by that, it helps me. I mentioned before about a timeline. It helps me build that timeline out. Helps investigators figure from that 8 p.m. Uh, at the drop-off time to 2.20 when police were called. Everything that could have been done by uh, Ruben during that time is being filled in by that. And the good thing is those gaps get filled in, the story gets tighter, and the case gets better. What point Chief, of this story have you been able to confirm with the cameras and walk parts that you've been able to uh, Some information that, that helped us is the information about the actual report of the crime. Uh, some pieces filled in early before police were called, uh, longer map, uh, storage unit, that kind of data comes in and that again helps us put a timeline together and, and puts him on camera and just again, another piece of the puzzle, another piece of the case. Chief, what is your level of cooperation at this point uh, right now? I mean, does it stop talking to you altogether or? For the most part, yeah. He's, again, constitutionally, he's, he's had his first appearance and, and he's, has rights that we will work to protect just like any other citizen so it's up to him to reach out to us now when he's ready to and when he's ready not. to talk and he's not he is not, he is not. No. Chief, he's you not. say building the case uh, abduction missing person is this moving in the direction of a murder investigation now it 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 has to you know as as time progresses and if somebody had had Lonzi, those those things that we work through just, just fade and it, and it turns more in from, you know, as, as I started this Friday morning when I first talked, this was, this was a potential abduction case and, and it could have been anything. The child couldn't have got, got, gotten out of the car and I walked through several of those things. Time slips away, time goes. It leans more away from that. When we were able to say for, for certain that it wasn't a stranger abduction, I just alluded to a minute ago. He had, Everin had Lonzi. He admits to the fact that he was in his care and custody and control and this is no magic act. This child just didn't poof disappear. We know who was responsible for this, and that's the frustrating part. I know who's responsible for it, and I know where to get the answer. He, and, and he claims so. But, but again, I don't want to. I don't want to get into specifics of of what he claimed and what he didn't claim. Uh, you know, as as our JSO Facebook page has has comments and and. Honestly, I've gone through and read every one of those, and, and to see the public support for for the family, for the efforts in this case, um, I, I look at those and, and the suggestions that are made are, are appreciated, and the, the support for this is appreciated. I honestly appreciate the media's support and continued focus on this case. It it will be resolved. I wish it would be resolved sooner than, than it has, but our efforts will continue. How much longer do you foresee operating under a camera? We'll work through that as time goes by. I still, I, I feel and the investigators feel that Lonzi was abducted by him. He had control of him. The stories that he tells doesn't add up. I have to consider that still an active abduction case. As time goes, that will be reviewed. Uh, that's worked in conjunction with us and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. We feel like there's a need at, and there's some point there will be to, to pull away from the Amber Alert and just work it as, as, as Roger mentioned, just as a murder investigation. But, uh, but we're not ready for that yet, and we're not ready to stop. Chief, what on that um, note, we're seeing so many police resources, so many Jacksonville Sheriff's Officers, detectives, canine units out there at the scene uh, working so hard. I know the conditions are terrible. Ebron not saying this information is keeping them from working other cases. I mean. What is this doing to the workload for JSO, for the resources, for the rest of the city? You know, we, the, the, I'm sorry, there, there, there is a finite level of resources that we have. Uh, investigators who are focusing their attention on this, honestly, like you say, are not focusing their attention on something else. But this is job one, and this is what we do. We, we are reactive when these things occur, and we can adjust our manpower levels, still provide the same level of service throughout the city, we're not gonna not respond to 911 calls because we're dealing with this. You know, I mentioned last night, we're cops and this, this is what we do and this is how we adjust to, to things that come on. You know, you can't, 
you can't pick what happens and you just have to be reactive to it. Um, part, part of, you know, I alluded that, you know, my contact with the sheriff and the undersheriff are just that, or to deal with the, the agency issues and, and them to provide me direction with how to use our resources. Um, this, this, is, this is just what we did. What theories of motive are you working through and trying to explain why um, We're working through a lot of different motives uh, for me to sit here and discuss what our plans are and the motives are. I don't think it would help the case. It certainly wouldn't help to find, uh, find, find the baby, and I don't see the need to do it. Yeah, we, again, I, I backed off of the fact that this was a stranger abduction because he admitted that certain things were, were not accurate from his original original case. I'm not going to try him in the media and to, to do that, to talk about motive and to talk about statements and those kind of things. Could do that. I'm not going to jeopardize the case that we're building against him because I let too many facts out. But I will let you know and the public know that if there's something that we need to be doing, you can bet your bottom dollar we're doing it. Does Long Beach District have any official sign in regard to it? Again, talking too many specific details can't help. I appreciate the question. Where is Smarter than that. I mean, I know he's that. Where is he? That? Sheriff Williams is on a pre plan. He, he had planned a vacation prior to even uh, winning the election. This just happened to be when it came up. Um, th this is what it is. This, this ship rolls. He gave directions. Like I said, I, I talked to him uh, Friday. I've continued. I actually I had a text conversation with him earlier this morning. Myself and the undersheriff have been working through this. Um, it is it is not without specific direction that we're operating. When will he be back? I, I'm not sure about that. I can get it to the PIO, but I know this, again, this was, this was pre-planned. Um, I don't want to make excuses for that or be apologetic, but this is operating. Our attention is where it needs to be, and the uh, public needs to know that. Any other questions? Thank you again for your uh, support.